all of the block ciphers operate on a fixed length, fixed size block. DES was 64 bits, AES 128 bits, so they're typically those two values. What if I have a file larger than 64 bits? All right, so that's what we look at in this topic. What if I have a one megabyte file, I want to encrypt with DES, well, we need to break that file into blocks, encrypt a block at a time, but there are some different ways to combine them together. And that's what the what are called modes of operation, block cipher modes of operation are. So when we encrypt longer than B bits, first we break the plain text into B bit blocks. We add padding if necessary. If that last block if B is 64 and the last block is 10 bits, we have to fill out the remaining 54 bits to make it a 64-bit block with some predefined value. That's we pad it out. Maybe we just fill it out with zeros. Or we repeat those 10 bits. Okay, we could take the first 10 bits, repeat them uh, as necessary. So that would be defined in the algorithm, how to pad. And then apply the cipher such as deaths on each block, one at a time. But if we do that in the, the simplest way, just apply it and join up the ciphertext, there are some security issues that arise. So people have designed different modes of operation, different ways to do the, the multiple blocks. The, the naive way, or the simplest approach, is called the electronic codebook, ECB. If you saw when I did open SSL, I used dash des dash ECB, the simplest approaches. And let's say we have a large plain text and we split it into n blocks, P1, P2, up to Pn. So with ECB, what we do is we, we choose a key, one key, we encrypt P1 with that key using our cipher, then we encrypt P2 using the same key, using the same cipher, and we keep going. Pn using the same key, we get n ciphertext blocks, C1 to Cn. The resulting ciphertext is just the concatenation of those n ciphertext blocks. Just join them together. So you take, if we're using DES, we would get 64 bits as the output of the first encryption, C1, then 64 bits is the output for the next block, C2. We just join them together so we have 128 bits. So that's the ECB mode of operation, concatenate the outputs. Decrypt is just uh, split the ciphertext into 64 bit blocks, decrypt each with the correct key, and you get the plain text, and then you concatenate the plain text. Almost identical, but we use decrypt. That's the obvious approach. What's wrong with it? There's an obvious problem with it, too. Let's say I have a large file, many plain text blocks. Then the problem that can arise in this is I may have repetitions of my blocks. Maybe P1 and P70 are the same 64 bits. If the two blocks are the same plain text values and I use the same key, then I'll get the same ciphertext. So C1 and C70 will be identical. That is, if I have a long plain text and it turns out there are some repetitions in those blocks of plain text, then there'll be repetitions in the blocks of ciphertext. Repetitions mean that the resulting ciphertext are not random. Repetitions are bad for security because it means that we have some structure in the plain text that the attacker may take advantage of. All right. In the same way that we analyze the frequency using Caesar cipher, monoalphabetic cipher, that was because there were repetitions or some things occurred more frequently than others in the cipher text. So the big problem with ECB, it's very simple, but if you get repetitions in the plain text, you will have repetitions in the ciphertext. The same blocks appearing multiple times. 
and that can open up uh, a chance for the attacker to work back and find the plain text. Hence, there are other modes of operation that try to make sure that there are no repetitions. Even if there are in the plain text, there are no repetitions in the ciphertext. ECB is okay if you only have small plain text. Very likely to have repetitions in that plain text. And the other modes of operation are listed, the main ones are listed on these slides. There's cipher block chaining or CBC. Cipher feedback mode, CFB I think. Output feedback mode, OFB, counter mode, CTR sometimes. And there are some others as well. These slides show four modes. We'll quickly show the concepts of a couple of them. Roughly those four are all considered secure in most cases. They may have some small uh, variations to them, but all can be used uh, in practice. CBC, cipher block chaining. We take our plain text, split it into n blocks. We choose some initialization vector, IV, or some initial value sometimes it's called. We need that as an extra parameter. To encrypt, we take the plain text block 1, XOR it with our initial value, then encrypt the output, and we get C1. For the next plain text block, P2, we XOR that with the previous ciphertext block, and then encrypt that, say using DES. So each phase we take the cipher text block from the previous phase, XOR it with our plain text, and encrypt to get the next output of cipher text. So we're combining or we're chaining together based upon the cipher text. We use the cipher text from the previous into the next. The result, if you have two plain text values the same, let's say P1 and P2 are the same. We XOR P1 with the initial value, we encrypt and we get ciphertext. When will C1 equal C2? If P1 equals P2, when will the two ciphertext values be the same? They'll be the same if the input to the encrypt boxes are the same. The two keys are the same. When does C1 equal C2? If the input to the encrypt box is the same, when will they be the same? If the inputs to the XOR are the same, if P1 and P2 are the same, it requires the initial value to be the same as C1. If C1 equals the initial value that we chose, then C1 and C2 will be the same, which is bad. Right, because we'd have two plain text blocks, the same ciphertext blocks. But C1, let's say I choose IV randomly. What's the chance of C1 being the same as IV? Very, very small. Because C1 is some ciphertext obtained effectively randomly by encrypting. The chance of two 64-bit values being the same is almost zero. So there's a small chance of C1 and IV being the same but effectively zero, meaning they're different, and if they're different, C1 and C2 will be different, and the same flows on for the next blocks. That is, with CBC mode, two input blocks which are the same will almost always produce two output blocks which are different, and that's what we want. There are a couple of variations. Uh, decryption is essentially the opposite to get our plain text back. CBC is common, it's commonly used. Cipher feedback mode and output feedback mode are similar. We will not go through them. You will do that in your own time. We're not finished yet. Counter mode. Counter mode. 
choose an initial value, some counter value, maybe zero, 64 zeros. Encrypt that counter value. XOR the output of the encryption with your first plain text block, and you get the ciphertext. For the next plain text block, you take the counter, and what do you do with a counter? What do you do with counters? We increment them. All right. The counter 2 is maybe the value 1. Encrypt that. XOR with P2, you get ciphertext. Counter 3, you increment. You just keep incrementing the counter. Encrypt. XOR with the plain text, And you get your ciphertext. If P1 and P2 are the same, C1 and C2 will be the same if the output of the encryption is the same. The output of the encryption will not be the same if the two inputs are different. And they are different because they, one was the initial value of the counter, the other was that value incremented. Different inputs to the encrypt will give us different outputs. XOR with the same plain text will give us different ciphertext. So that's our aim of different ciphertext blocks for the same plain text block. Let's pair counter mode with just jumping back CBC. Which one's easier? Which one's easier for you when I ask a quiz question? CBC or counter mode? Maybe not much different for some people. Sometimes counter mode looks simple. Just take a counter, encrypt, XOR. Whereas here, each phase depends upon the output of the previous phase. There's a big difference in implementation. With counter mode, we can implement such that it's much faster because we can do some phases in parallel. We can encrypt the first block at the same time on a different CPU, encrypt the second block. With CBC, to encrypt the second block, we need the output of the encryption of the first block. So we cannot use a parallel processor in this case. And most of your computers today are parallel processors. You have four cores on your CPU, on your phone, you may have eight cores. If you can encrypt with all of them at the same time, it's much faster than doing one after the other with CBC. So there's some performance differences. We will not spend much more time on the modes of operation. I may ask you to do some homework to investigate them, but they're not too hard. And we may use them with some software. But be aware there are a way to combine multiple uh, plain text blocks and encrypt them all. We'll stop there. Next week we'll return to double S and a meet in the middle attack on double desk.